Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Thanks for joining me today. So today I have a super fun drawing time lapse for you of probably my favorite pastel drawing from this year. So, uh, so I hope you'll stick to the end to see the end result because I enjoy this one so much. I'll be drawing a hyacinth macaw um, with pastel pencils on this color pastel mat. It's called sand and I have never worked on this color pastel map before. So my plan for this one was to draw the macaw on a rather large size and then keep the background completely empty so that the color of the pastel mat would contrast really well with the macaw itself to make him stand out really well. So I think I succeeded. I really hope you enjoy it. So I will talk you through the process a little bit as well. Um, the full tutorial is available on Patreon, so if you're interested in following this piece along and um, just drawing along with this piece, learning to draw it yourself, you can have a look on Patreon for the $4 tier. So no money for a piece this large and you'll get access to all the other videos as well, of course. Um, so the link to Patreon is in the description and in this video you'll see the sped up process. So I have worked with Stabilo Carbothellos, but also a few Faber-Castell pit pencils. Um, so not all of the Stabilo ones are light vests. So for the darkest blue tone, I picked a Faber-Castell pit. So that one is a little bit more light vest. I want to frame this one and hang it in my new home when I've moved. So uh, I decided to go for the blue pit to make it a little bit more lasting. So also the size is 13 by 17 inches, rather large, and I wanted to keep the paper completely clean and empty, so I decided to work from left to right. Usually I start with the head of the animal and then work my way towards the body, but for this one um, the risk would be too high, the risk of smudging and getting the paper dirty. So I started with the wing and then worked towards the head very, very carefully. I had to uh, make sure that my hand didn't touch the paper so much. And um, you can also just put another piece of paper underneath your hand while working. But for this one, I just decided to not touch the paper as much as possible. So I kept the wing pretty undetailed because I wanted most of the detail to be on the head and the beak. Um, so you see, you can see that I did put a little bit of wing feather texture in there, but it's not too prominent. I decided to move on to the rest of the macaw first, and then um, I could decide later if I wanted more detail in the wing or not. So what I did first is just fill in the whole area that I was working on, on that in that time, and fill it in with the base tones completely then make sure that all the base zones were blended nicely and then I could add the details on top so I started off rather dark um, usually with my darkest blue tone from Faber-Castell pit but I also mix in more blues um, like some lighter blues from the Stabilo line also some greenish turquoisey tones and also some purples to make sure that there was enough depth in the feathers um, if you add only blue or only blue and gray for instance it would have looked pretty flat so <laughs> I added in as many tones as I could find to make sure that the fur the fur the feathers looked very uh, deep and colorful I always draw fur so I'm not used to drawing feathers so that's why I say fur sometimes instead of uh, feathers but actually i enjoyed this one very much i'm not that used to drawing birds but lately i've been starting to getting more into birds and i've really enjoyed this one so i'll probably be doing more birds in pastels so for the cheek i didn't add in all the details yet i decided to move on to the forehead and the eye first so I did do some base layers and some very basic layers for the feather texture as well. Then I moved on to the forehead and now moving on to the eye. So around the eye there's a piece of skin, a very bright yellow, nice skin to draw. Uh, contrasts really well with the feathers and it also fits the background color really well. 
so that's why I also chose this background um, color and I decided to do that skin area first and then move on to the eyelids and the eye so when I fill in the eye I make sure to not only add black so on the reference photo the eye was very black but I start out with a base tone of number 770 here that's a very um, dark purplish grayish tone I think it's called Payne's Gray but I'm not sure um, which put down a really nice base layer for the eye and then I could go on top with black to deepen it so also, in combination with my Stabilos and Fabric Castell pits, I added a Creta Color pastel pencil, the black one, which is supposed to be one of the blackest um, pastel pencils around, and actually it really is. I've used it on the beak as well later on, um, but also in the eye, and it gave the eye so much more depth to it. So I would really recommend getting that one. It's the Creta Color a black pastel number two or something like that um, so if you can find it around at where you live um, definitely give it a go because it really helps getting the extra deep black tones in your drawing so then for the forehead I found this one of the most enjoyable pieces or parts of the drawing I started off with multiple tones of blues again and I made sure to follow um, that shape and that roundness of the forehead also in my base layers because that really helps getting the, the form of the forehead in there and as always I started off a little darker than what I want the feathers to be eventually um, so especially there next to the beak it started off really dark and then the very edge of the forehead was a little more highlighted so that's where I added my my lightest tones my turquoise tones as well and a little bit of white and then I drew in the feathers so with a slightly lighter tone every time I go over my base tones and draw those feather shapes in the direction of the growth of the feathers so basically in the same way as I would draw fur and then also it's super important that the the contrast within the feathers so um, the shadows in between the feathers are dark enough so after I draw those light feathers on top of the base layer I go back in with my dark tones my dark blues and a little bit of black and that paint gray color uh, to deepen those shadows in between the feathers and that gives them a lot more depth as well Alright, so then moving on to that beak area and the skin around the beak as well. Um, the beak I found the most difficult area of the drawing to make because it's a really large area um, and very prominent part of the drawing. So it had to be really detailed, otherwise it would not be a very good fit with uh, the detail of the feathers. So I don't draw beaks a lot. So I had a little bit of trouble with the first part of the beak, but then um, when I had finished the bottom area, I had a little bit of a better idea how to do it. So then the rest of the beak worked out really nicely as well. I'm sorry for my hair um, on this screen. So I had to move my camera up a lot more to make sure that the whole drawing would fit on screen. So sometimes my head is in the way a little bit, so sorry for that. So for the beak, I also made sure to put in lots of different colors. So don't only put in black and gray, because that's going to look very flat. I use that, um, that 770, that paints gray purpley color a lot for the base layer as well. And I also put in a little bit of brown, a bit of blue, a bit of purple even, which really helps getting in that shine of the beak. So then when putting in all my base layers and when the paper is filled up, I do a little bit, a little bit of blending. And then on top of that, I could put in my lightest lights and my darkest darks. But as I said, the whole 
process in real time is available on Patreon for the $4 tier, which is um, the cheapest tier of all the tutorials I have. So then zooming in on the beak a little bit, adding in some very light lines with a beige and um, that indicates the damage that was done on the beak. It's never completely smooth, there are, there's always some damage to it, some grooves. So I made sure to al also add those in because it really adds a lot of um, liveliness to the bird. And then I had to make that transition part in between the beak and the feathers, which was rather dark. So I didn't put in too much detail there. And then I also still had to fill in a bit of the tongue that you could see, a bit of the inside of the mouth as well. And I actually added some green there and some yellow as well and some purple. And then I moved on to the second wing and actually on the reference photo you could see um, that he had his paw up and he was eating something from his paw. And at the start I was planning on drawing that in as well. But towards the end I decided to not put it in and to just draw the second wing and uh, draw the body down a little more and I think that looks better eventually on my drawing um, Yeah, I think it looks a little bit more clean I would say But actually the photo was really cute uh, with um, the bird having its paw up So after five hours this drawing was done I really hope you like it. Let me know what you think of it. Um, if you like this drawing, give it a share and a like because it really helps growing my channel. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. You'll see here, you'll see me doing some final details here, adding a little bit more detail in the feathers. So after the drawing is done, I always like to go back in and uh, just add some final details here and there. Look at it from a distance and then go back in. And then after the very final details, this drawing was done. So I really hope you liked it. Let me know what you think of it below. And then I'll see you in the next video.